Hi, this is Ms. Kidman, and we are going to be talking about solving absolute value inequalities. So remember, inequalities mean that we are talking about things that are not necessarily equal. We've got greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, greater than, and less than. Those are the inequalities that we're going to be looking at today. So we're mixing those inequalities with our absolute value. In this first problem here, we've got the absolute value of the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 4. So if that's the case, I want to figure out what x values can I put in here where they're going to be less than or equal to 4. So the big thing that I want to do first is figure out what are my key values that I'm looking at. And the numbers that we're comparing it with is this number 4 here. So imagine it said the absolute value of x equals 4. What would those solutions be? Well, in the last video, we talked about that that would be x equals 4 and x equals negative 4. Now with absolute values, 0 is also a crucial number. So when we're looking at these, there's kind of a couple ways we can look at it. The first way we're going to talk about is looking at it using a number line. So here is a number line. We've got 0, we've got 4, we've got negative 4. And notice how this kind of creates four areas here for us to look at. We've got this area here that's less than negative 4. We've got this area from negative 4 to 0, this area from 0 to 4, and this area greater than 4. Now those four areas, we want to test to see whether or not they work in this inequality. And we can do that just by picking a number that exists within that. So let's start by picking a number that is less than negative 4, like negative 5. So I'm going to plug it into our expression up here. So negative, the absolute value of negative 5, we're asking, is that less than or equal to 4? Well, the absolute value of negative 5, that's going to be 5. Is 5 less than or equal to negative 4? No. So I know that it's impossible for my solution to be down here. Because if negative 5 doesn't work, negative 6 doesn't work, negative 10 doesn't work, and negative 100 doesn't work. Let's test that next area. So a number between negative 4 and 0 is negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1, well, I know that that equals 1 because it's 1 away from 0. And I want to ask myself, is 1 less than or equal to 4? Yes. Yes, it is. So this area works. Now let's test that area from 0 to 4, doing the exact same thing. The absolute value of what's the number in there? 2. Well, the absolute value of 2 is 2. Is 2 less than or equal to 4? Why, yes. Yes, it is. And then lastly, we want to test a number above 4. So let's try 6. The absolute value of 6, well, that's 6. Is 6 less than or equal to 4? No, no, it's not. So this area doesn't work. So our solutions, the way we're going to write it, is meaning that we have any number from negative 4 to 4 that will work here. Now, because our problem up here says that it's equal it's less than or equal to 4. That means that 4 and negative 4 are options for us to use here. So our solution in this case is going to be we have when x is greater than or equal to negative 4 right here and when x is less than or equal to 4 here. But we want to combine those, right? So x has to be both of those things. So in that case, we can write it as one long expression that says that negative 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 4. And this here is our solution. Now, I want you to notice something. And this is kind of a cool pattern. And math is all about patterns, right? So the absolute value, looking at this problem here, the absolute value of x being less than or equal to 4, the solutions that we came up with here were x is less than 4, and x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Now notice something here. In this first case, I just brought that x down, the sign is the same, and that 4 stays the same. And that's an option. With my second solution here, notice that the x is the same. My absolute value sign has been flipped, or my inequality has been flipped, and the sign has changed on that last number. I can do this again with as many numbers as I want, and I can see that my solution here is always going to end up that way. 
there's going to be two solutions. And one is going to be where I keep the numbers the same. But we drop the absolute values. And then the other one, so that's option number one. Option number two, we keep the number in the absolute value the same. We flip the inequality and we flip the sign. So if that number on the outside here is a positive four, we're gonna flip it to a negative four. And our inequality flips from being less than or equal to to greater than. And these two solutions will be consistent for every single problem that we do. So with that being the case, we can look at this problem here where the absolute value of X is less than four and we can see that exact same thing. I can test it on my number line here. So with it being four, we still have zero, four, negative four, and I can test those values. Negative five, if I put that in there, that is not gonna work. If I put a negative two in there, that is going to work. If I put a one in there, that'll work. If I put a five in there, that will not work, right? So I can see that using my number line, the inequality is going to be negative four is less than x, and x is greater, or x is, and four is greater than x, right? Those are my two solutions. Using our pattern, I can say the same thing. x is less than four, or x is greater than negative four. And that's exactly what I got here using my number line. So for the remainder of these problems, we're gonna use this pattern of keep, 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 flip, flip, in order to find those solutions. So we're gonna use these inequalities and then we'll graph the solutions at the end. To solve these inequalities here, we wanna do that keep, 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 flip, flip method. And remember, anytime there's an absolute value, we're gonna have two solutions. So let's break this one down into our two solutions. I've got the keep, keep, keep solution here, and I've got the keep, flip, flip solution. Now I wanna solve it, which means I need to get X all by itself. So I'm gonna solve these, divide by three, divide by three, I get X is less than or equal to four, divide by three, divide by three, and X is greater than or equal to negative four. So that's the solving part that I've just done. Now I need to graph these solutions. The way that I'm gonna graph that is I'll draw my number line here. Remember my points that are important are four, negative four, and zero. So here's my zero, my four, and my negative four. Now I wanna graph it. To graph these, if it's a less than or an equal to, that means it could be four, so I'm gonna use a solid dot, or it could be negative four. Because it includes those, we're gonna use solid dots for those. Now, X can be less than or equal to four, so I'm going in this direction, from zero to four, or greater than or equal to negative four. So we're going in this direction. So you can see based on this picture that we could also write this as X is greater than or equal to negative four and less than or equal to four, all in one expression together. And this is our graph. We can do the same thing with this next one. We're going to write both our equations again and we get the 2x minus five for our keep, keep, keep. And then our other one is 2x minus five. Remember, we keep what's inside the absolute value the same every single time, flip our sign, flip the sign on that last number. And now I can solve those. So I'm gonna add five, add five, 2x is greater than 22, divide by two, divide by two, and I'm gonna get x is greater than 11. The other one, we'll solve that one as well. And we'll get 2x is less than negative 12, divide by two, divide by two, x is less than negative six. So then I will graph it. Notice in this case, the numbers that we care about here are gonna be this 11 and this negative six. So those are the numbers that I'm gonna put on my number line, zero, 11, negative six. And I notice that x is going to be greater than 11. Notice it doesn't include 11, so I'm actually gonna put an open circle there. 
Same with my negative six. It doesn't include it, so we have an open circle. Now I want to shade everything that is greater than 11. So that's going to be everything in this direction. And everything less than negative six is going to be everything in this direction. And there you go. That's an example of how you would solve inequalities that have absolute values within their expression and how you would graph their solutions. At